All right. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and, and get started. So my name is Nathan Carney with Profile Products. Um, I'm getting ready to talk to you today about some equipment that you'll need in transitioning to hydrofiber. So we're going to go through a, a few different things. Um, we're going to start off with, with one of the main questions we get, which is why is equipment necessary? Um, then I'll talk to you a little bit about the three different pieces of equipment we offer to open and utilize hydrofiber. Then we'll go into just, just a, a, a little bit on moisture and managing moisture and finish up with getting proper fill and, and, and what you need to, um, to change and, and utilize your, your filling machine. So there are four main reasons why you need equipment. Um, main one being hydrofiber is highly compressed. So one of these bales is compressed 13x. So imagine throwing it on the ground and trying to step on it. You're, you're really not going to get out of it what it's designed to do. Um, that works into, into the second point, which is yield. Um, again, you need the equipment to get the maximum yield and bulk density that we're guaranteeing out of the hydrofiber. So just for reference, one bale is going to yield you just about or over one cubic yard worth of loose material. So we've got to have the equipment to, to get that loft out of it. Third reason is, is its self-knitting property. So the way we manufacture this material is, is through a pressurized vessel. And what happens in that pressurized vessel is um, it creates almost legs like Velcro on the fibers. So the fibers like to lock and knit together. So if you were to open the material and just throw it on the ground, you're going to have a bird nest. Okay? So part of, the, um, part of what we'll get into with the equipment is the blending of another component, bark, peat, core, if, if, if that's what you're using. Um, so it's part of those self-knitting properties of why we have to blend those together. And the third reason um, really goes, goes hand in hand with the second, and it's, it's keeping consistent physical properties. So we want to be able to tell you your first pot of the day is going to be the same as your thousandth pot of the day. So the equipment's designed to keep that, that consistent feed. Okay? So now that we've got through the reasons, let, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the hydrofiber processing unit, unit itself. So the hydrofiber processing unit um, was originally designed by Profile Products, and about a, two, a year and a half ago, we teamed up with a company by the name of Agronomics, and they helped refine our process, and I'm going to go and tell you, create a, a, better, a better machine. Um, so this is designed and, and done by Agronomics. So the processing unit itself here is really a four-part a four system. So you've got a dual belt conveyors, so the top conveyor is going to carry your, your hydrofiber. So after you uh, pull the, the bag off of the bale, you'll let the hydrofiber ride on that top conveyor. The bottom conveyor is where your peat, your bark, your core, um, or combinations thereof will, will travel. The first section on, on top um, is the initial opening. So we're going to take this bale and mechanically open it um, to, to refluff those fibers. After that, it goes into a secondary opening. So what we want to make sure is you're not getting balls or chunks coming through that. So um, when those balls or chunks come, come through, they will get opened in, the, in that second stage of opening. And then lastly, we're going to take both those components. So we're going to take your hydrofiber and your raw material, and we're going to blend it right here in this blending chamber. From there, it'll drop onto a discharge conveyor and go down your line, where you can add your, your lime and your amendments, however, however you're, you're set up. So, um, this line is designed for 100 yards an hour. So if you're doing more or le if you're doing less than that, um, we'd be able to make the adjustments on this line. But we max out at 100 yards an hour. Okay. <clears throat> this is um, a real live image of the hydrofiber processing unit, just to give you um, give you an idea there. You can set it up multiple ways. So you can, depending on how your mix line is, is configured. Now, all these are drawn with an agronomics mix line. But if you have a different a mix line from a different company, it'll, it'll set up almost identical to what you're seeing here. Um, so you can open, open your peat moss and feed your peat on the bottom conveyor um, and then into a surge hopper if you would like. Um, the other thing you could do is put your processing unit at the end. So now you're utilizing the mixer that's in the hydrofiber processor to, to blend all of your amendments. This is another way we can do it where we can change and manipulate the percentages in the mix. Okay, 
So moving on to, to the big boy. So, so we have an extra wide machine. So this is for, 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 for blenders or for, for growers that, that utilize a lot of substrate. Looking at 300 yards an hour of total mix coming out of this, this, this machine. Um, 150 of that can be just straight hydrofiber. So if you're blending a lot of substrate, this is, this is the machine for you. Um, the upgrades that have been made on this machine are, are more industrial. So they're, they're meant to run 20, 24 hours a day. Um, we've done away with belt and pulleys and everything is direct drive motors. So now you don't have to worry about uh, pulley issues or anything like that. You're all working directly off of motors. The last piece of equipment we have is, is one that we're, we're introducing this year. Um, it is our hydrofiber expander. So this utilizes the same opening characteristics of the hydrofiber processing unit. It's just for lower capacity growers. So we're talking somebody that's got one or two planting lines. Um, the opening of, of the fiber is the same. So you'll, you'll put your hydrofiber on, um, on the conveyor and it'll pull it in and open where we'll blend with, um, with your peat or bark or whichever your raw components are. Um, the way we've got it set up here is with a, with a bale shaver. So the bale shaver would open directly up into, into this um, half yard hopper and then you would add your hydrofiber, <clears throat> the two components would blend and then it would go down, down the line or, or to a flat filler, however, however you guys are, are designed to set up. So, like I said, you, you can open, open peat and, and blend your two components and go into a surge hopper, same as we were talking with the main processing unit, or you could put it at the end and blend your hydrofiber towards the end of the line and utilize the mixer that's here. The third option um, is basically real simple. You're, you're gonna open, open material, you'll add hydrofiber and go straight into, into a flat filler. So, as I said, all, all these are designed with, with, the, um, with agronomics materials, but you can utilize um, other companies if that's, if that's who you have in, in your facility. All right, so I'm gonna briefly touch on, on, on managing moisture. So that's one of, the, one of the key things that you need to look at after you've made um, your hydrofiber mix in, in your processing unit. So um, moisture content, if, if you're too low, um, you're going to run into wettability issues. You'll also run into to issues with shrink in your pots. So it may look good once you run it through a water tunnel, you're going to drop an inch to two inches. Um, and that typically happens when your material is too dry. Um, on the opposite side, if your material is too wet, um, it's going to fill and it's going to wet fine. But you could get some clogging issues coming through, coming through your fillers. So that's another thing. You really don't want to be too low, but you don't want to be complete opposite and on the high side. So a uh, couple ways that, uh, that we utilize in our, in our labs, and I'm, I'm really not gonna go through all of the details on, on each one of these tests, um, but it's really good for, for you um, if you are producing your own soil, but even if you're, you're buying a premix to, to, to have some QC in place to test moisture and test other, um, other parts of the mix. So the first one being a float test, um, and I can, I can share all the, um, all the details with you um, after our talk, but um, float test being one of them. So it's, so it's very inexpensive, it's very quick. Um, mainly you're gonna take a, a beaker of water and a tablespoon, give or take, of, of substrate, and you're gonna dump that in the water, and you're gonna time the amount of time it takes for that material to sink. So um, anything under 30 seconds, your moisture is usually in that, in that good range. Another test being, and, and this is one that I prefer to use because it's very quick, um, it does require a little bit more training um, just to get used to, to what you're feeling, um, but, it, but it's a squeeze test. So basically all you're gonna do is, is grab your substrate, squeeze it, and by the feel of it, you'll be able to tell whether your moisture is in an in a, in a acceptable range or not. So mix being too dry, you're gonna grab it and it's gonna fall, directly fall apart. Um, on the far side, mix being too wet, you're gonna squeeze it and water's, water's gonna drip out of there. If you got water dripping out of your, your substrate, it is, it is definitely uh, too wet. What you really want is, is a good tacky feeling, um, but you want that substrate to hold a ball for a minute and then release, okay? So now we've got our proper moisture. Let's just talk real briefly about 
um, about fill. So as we all know, if you don't get good fill, you're going to have issues down the line. So a couple things we, we, we recommend um, with the hydrofiber um, blends is, is adjusting your flow. Hydrofiber falls out of the hopper differently, and it happens with, very, with, with basically every wood mix. The material falls out more in chunks instead of a wave. So you really want to adjust, um, adjust your gate height a little bit and speed up your belt so you have a better flow coming out of that hopper. Second thing you want to look at um, is that compactor. So if you've got a compactor the, right at the beginning as the material flows, you want that to sit right up on top of, of your tray. And what that's going to do is basically push the material in. Okay, so you don't have bridging on top of it. One of the third tweaks is, is kind of some old technology um, that I've recommended to a, to a lot of our growers is utilization of the propeller. So there was the propeller or whirly bird that was on a lot of the designs. Those work. They work really well. So if you're able to, to put that on, um, on the, soil, on the uh, container surface, speed up the RPM, again, it's going to move that material it's going to loosen it up and it's going to push it into, into those cells. And then third I'll, I'll get into in just a second is, is the, the soil conditioner. Okay, So first thing I talked about here um, is lowering, lowering the compactor. So as you see we've, we've lowered it right up on top of the soil surface or on the container surface. So what we're doing is pushing that material in. The propeller. If you don't have it installed, I would reinstall it um, if, if you have, have that capabilities because it, it works and works really well, um, especially when you're looking at 1006, um, 1006 packs and, and, and packs along that size. So the third, the, the, the last thing that, that we talked about was, was a soil conditioner. Um, and you'll be able to see that on a KVXL. Um, so this was developed, so Profile and Agronomics uh, went into a joint partnership of, of trying to determine how we can get good flow out of a hopper. Um, and this is what we came up with. So, so it's, it's basically a bolt-on, um, it's a bolt-on apparatus that mounts on any, pretty much any hopper. Um, it's got a tine on the inside that's taking that, that substrate and it's loosening it back up to where your material is not going to fall in chunks, but it's going to fall more in a wave pattern. So if you look at, uh, look at 1006 packs or something smaller, it's going to fill it similar to, to a Rolodex. It's going to fill those in directly. Okay? And what that'll do is um, eliminate the voids and it'll get all of your cells as uniform as you can make them. So um, I've got one here on a, on a KVL and a KVXL, but I've also got one on a Bowen Lawson and a, and a pack. So it does uh, mount onto basically any, any type of, of filler that, that you may have. So just, just to recap, um, great tips on, on filling. So flow, getting that flow right, whether it's with, with a soil conditioner or without, but getting a good flow coming out of that hopper is, is, is really key. Um, second thing being moisture, moisture too low, moisture too high. Um, if you're too low, fill's gonna look great, um, but you're gonna get settling. If it's too high, you're, you may, may or may not get good fill depending on your, your container size. Um, Third and fourth are just adjustments on the machine. So looking at, uh, looking at the compactor and then adjustment of the plow or uh, adjustment of the, the propeller. Utilize it if you have it. Um, and then the third thing we really didn't um, address too much, um, but as far as is, is transplanting. So if you have automatic transplanters, I would adjust those a couple millimeters because hydrofiber mixes, they're very spongy. So I've recommended to adjust um, an additional two millimeter depth on your planting so when that sponge and that spring comes back up your plug is still still going to be in your substrate. So uh, that was a kind of a real quick and quick and dirty a uh, little bit on the hydrofiber processing unit and and some fill um, but I'd be glad to answer uh, answer any questions if anybody has any. So can you express more on the um, collaboration between uh, Profile and Agronomics and just kind of how that came about and what your real goal was for that? Yeah, so um, Profile built some of the original machines, but we're not in the equipment business. So um, our business manager made a couple phone calls and honestly, I'd like to give you a big story, but they answered the phone and, and we started working with them and, and their team. So, so 
it's really not, not any more complicated, complicated than that. Sometimes it's smarter, not harder, right? Yeah. With the moisture levels being, um, when mixing, your moisture levels needs to be a certain way. Are we working with ag agronomics on um, a sensor to, to kind of tell you at mixing, are we too high, too low, or uh, yeah, something I mean, a little bit more scientific than a uh, uh, so, stick your finger yeah, in so, it? So there are moisture meters, moisture meters out there. Um, the one reason I, I didn't throw that up there, they are fairly high cost. So I would say a, a, a moisture analyzer, and it's what we use in our lab um, in North Carolina, um, it is probably the most efficient because you take a one gram sample and in 30 seconds you've got a moisture. But you are looking between five and 10,000 just for one of those. Um, if you can do that, great, but these would be another, another way. But um, as far as sensors that they're developing, nothing that I know of. Um, but they could have something in the works. They just haven't, uh, haven't divulged that information. Thank you.